children or brides exposing forced puberty in Syria. In northern Syria, the sinister practice of forced puberty involves administering young girls with hormonal pills and injections to hasten their puberty for the sole purpose of marrying them off early. Additionally, some parents are reported to physically beat their daughters on their backs under the misguided belief that it accelerates puberty. For instance, Samar, a girl mentioned in a report by online publication Tiny Hand, was forced by her father at age 14 to take pills in their tent to speed up her puberty, which led to her marriage soon after her first period. This practice has devastating consequences. Samar was divorced after getting pregnant and then losing her baby. Despite bans by the health directorates of Idlib and Aleppo on selling and using hormonal injections and drugs without prescriptions, the Tiny Hand investigation found that these medications contain estrogen, excuse me, containing estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone can still be purchased without a prescription. Dr. Kenan Zia Duglu, a gynecologist interviewed in the report stated that these practices could lead to early menopause before the age of 35 and in severe cases cause ovarian and uterine cancer. Okay, we need to unpack this. So this was a story that was sent to me by a friend of mine and he was like, you guys have to cover this. And I read this report and I was shocked. So the um, report mostly covers areas in northern Syria that I believe are under um, opposition control. And um, it in these areas, there are many young girls that are extremely vulnerable for a variety of reasons, and they are forced to take, yeah, they're they're forced to go into puberty, essentially. They're forced to take pills to help kind of usher in like a, f- a false, like when you start your period, it's called a menarch, right? So a false menarch to kind of issue it in. And then they have to like get married off right away. And this has really severe health consequences because your womb actually isn't developed enough to carry a life, right? And um, so you're very likely to lose the baby. There's likely to be severe um complications uh it can lead to birth defects it can lead to premature births it can lead to um infant and mother mortality and so in this in some places there they have documented cases of girls being forced into puberty by taking hormones at age 12 and then they get married off and When the pills aren't doing it good enough, then they start to get injections to help bring in the puberty even faster. And obviously, this has severe health consequences and complications. And, um, in, in, in what, oh my God. And not only that, but apparently there's a very common practice of just beating them on their backs severely because somehow they believe that if you beat them on the back, that it's going to make them have their men arc sooner. And this was, it got to such an extent that the United Nations actually put out a statement on it when it released a report a few years ago. And when that happened, the Syrian government put in more controls to try to prevent people from getting access to these medications without a prescription. However, in practice, it, there is zero enforcement. There's a zero enforcement, so people can still get all of this stuff anyways. And, um, I mean, it, reading the report in detail, like, it's really, really shocking. There was even one mother of a girl who pushed her daughter into forced puberty and said that it was a good thing because then you're, ch- you're going to be closer in age to your own children and then you can be, like, friends. Really, really mind-boggling. So... Armin, now that I've just told you about this for the first time, what is what is your reaction? I have no words. I have no words. I keep thinking I've seen the most bizarre, disgusting stuff, and I just like I keep getting surprised. I mean, after fifteen years of doing this, I still get surprised. They keep coming up with new ways to surprise us. I don't know what this is. 
Mm -hmm. I I don't even know what to, I don't, I have no words. I don't know how to react to this. Yeah, it's what really really people, shocking. Why? I'm I don't know. I'm just like why. Well, actually, I'm, part of the reason why is because these families are trying to offload the burden of having a daughter. They're trying to offload the economic burden of having a daughter as soon as possible, essentially. So, you know, there's a lot of, you, there, there can be a religious aspect to this, obviously, especially in terms of the child marriage. We know that this is allowed. We know that this is sanctioned as long as there is that first period. Hence, the, in, the incentive to start that period sooner, right? Um, but then there's also, we have to be honest in saying that, that there is a economic or material incentive in that within the culture, it is a burden to have these daughters. So they're trying to offload that burden onto someone else as soon as possible. What do you think about that aspect of it? Yeah. So, uh, so they, they're trying to offload both the boys and the girls, apparently. That this okay, no, this, this boys thing is a little bit different. I was about to get into that in a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. should, should I start that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when, when I decided to cover this news, our lovely editor, D in the live chat, everyone say thank you, D for her hard work. She, she was editing this, and she was like, Suzanne, I think we should touch on this other aspect of this as well. And this is shocking. She brought to my attention that in the ISIS camps in the different areas of Syria, the Kurdish areas of Syria, you know, where they control these camps of like tens of thousands of ISIS fighters and their wives and children, that in the camps where it is supposed to be only women and children, the, this is, okay, guys, I want you to brace yourself, like seriously, mentally brace yourself for what I'm about to say. The women in these ISIS camps use the young boys, basically, they, they sexually abuse these young boys to have sex with the grown women so that the grown women will get pregnant while they're still within this camp that are supposed to be separated from men so that they can have children to raise the quote-unquote cubs of the caliphate. Wait, what? This is a real thing. To the point that now the, the, the Kurdish forces that control these camps, they have to separate the boys from the mothers around age 12 so that the boys are not sexually exploited because so that they can continue to have more ISIS babies, essentially. Hmm. I, I don't know how much detail I want to get into because it's really, really perverse. There are certain people, there's a lot about this that people question because they're saying, oh, if, if you are claiming that these women are getting pregnant by these boys and then having these babies, where are babies? Where are the babies? Where are the pictures of the babies? And the Kurdish fighters have said that they hide the babies. And so that we can't find them. So we can't take photos of the babies to prove that there are new children. However, they do have many accounts from boys who they took from the camps for their own protection, or so they say, talking about knowing other boys that were used this way. And talking to some of the boys that other people say were used this way and um all sorts of stuff so some people say that there isn't enough evidence for this however there were several very knowledgeable scholars who work in the field who work in these camps and from their own personal testimony they seem to think that this is a very real thing that's happening in these isis camps it was mm. shocking just to be clear we can be we can be sure yeah, because people called in to question it mainly because they're like, well, where are the new children, right? But then there's all these other scholars and field workers who are saying we're talking to these kids and they're saying that, yes, it does happen. Okay, but this one, this second story that you're mentioning, 
hasn't been verified as much as this main one, right? Oh, yeah, like the forced puberty thing. Oh, yeah, this is very well documented. Puberty. Yeah, the forced puberty part is the very well documented thing that is happening. That one is not 100% sure. We're not 100% sure that that's a true story. So just be just be mindful, just be skeptical about that that second part, right? But what we do know, um, what we do know is that both boys and girls are trying are unwanted because of the economic situation there. They're trying to offload them, and they're using this method of forced puberty for girls. They're not using it for boys. That's correct. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. I mean, obviously, obviously that would you wouldn't need that for boys. Um. Um. So the, the interesting thing is that it, sh- it shows that uh, when like, why can't they just like uh, marry like give them to another family that is not going to have sex with them until they actually re- reach the age of puberty? Like why can't they do that? Like maybe there's the- no incentive oh. to do that. Maybe no one is interested in that. I'm assuming that if that was a possibility, then people would do that. But. Presumably, no one wants to bring on that burden until they're actually going to get something out of it, if I'm being very cynical. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I just want to leave this story because I am pretty... What You want to read this by D? Um, oh, wow. D is saying, a friend in Tunisia told me his mom had a daughter and his father was so upset he refused to name her. Family members had to step in. Oh my God. Yeah. God. The attitude towards like baby girls and femicide, like especially infant femicide, is it really boggles the mind. Especially because you look at places like China and India where the sex ratio is then completely skewed because people hate the existence of women so much, but then no one, none of their sons can have wives and then have their own children it's just like such a self-destructive mentality it's crazy i'm trying to fact check this this other story that you mentioned in real time which is gonna not a good idea to do that live on air but no, i you think get distracted. yeah 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 because i just want to make sure that we we don't say something that ends up so guys just because it's hard for me to check fact check, check this live on air, just be careful. Just be mindful that we don't know if the second part of the story is correct. But it's just a uh, mm-hmm. just a part that it's about forced puberty. That's the only part that we are. There, with the about. ISIS thing with the ISIS camps, there were some questions, but there were it's also just, so like, many people that were like, "This is a real thing." So I was leaning more towards. This is a very real possibility, personally, based on what I was reading. Okay, the, don't, the reason why I don't believe it is because it's not in line with ISIS ideology. It's, it's on Islamic, but they want to raise the caliphate. So that, that was the intention. So maybe it's like ends justify the means. They, that's not how they think the end justify the means. That's not how they think. They're, they're, very, they're, very, they're very principle-oriented. That's not that's a utilitarian perspective that you wouldn't have as the ISIS member. They very much have to do the things the right way. And that is not at all and not at all even close to ISIS ideology. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't think that I don't think I, I don't think I don't believe the story. Really? Okay. Yeah. The forced puberty one that is very much in line with Islamic ideology because I mean, the girls are Islamically already within the age that Islam allows them to get married, right? But maybe their bodies are not mature enough, so you might, like, I mean, it's not in line with Islamic ideology, but I could see how Islamic ideology in... Could lead to that. Could lead to that. You you know how, for example, honor killing is not in line with Islamic ideology, but I could see how Islamic ideology would lead to something like that. So again, this other forced, forced puberty stuff, I can... Again, it's not. There's nothing in Islam that tells you to do that, but I can again see how it could happen, right? And we have proof that it happened. But that other story is just so outside, you know, so in violation of even. Yeah, so I can't even imagine that 
you know, maybe I'm wrong, but I can't even imagine that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Well, the jury's out. Um, but it was something that I was very glad that Dee brought to my attention because I hadn't heard about that. And it's, I don't know, it is interesting to think about. 